For over 40 years of World Cup football, no nation from the black continent ever managed to qualify. Football in Africa was a long way off the level it is now, where some players feature among the best in the world. Due to this and the fact that the FIFA was imposing difficult qualification paths, which seemed somewhat discriminatory, no team ever made it before 1974. Zaire, now known as Democratic Republic of Congo, endured a period of success in which they won the 1968 Africa Cup of Nations, repeating the success six years later. They finally qualified, on the same year, to the tournament in West Germany, being put in the group with Scotland, Brazil and Yugoslavia. On the 14th of June, Zaire made their debuts against Scotland. Despite disrespectful comments from the Scottish manager Willie Ormond, it pops out that the game is far more balanced than expected. Scotland struggled to outplay the Africans, even if they eventually win by 2-0. This is a surprise to many, who expected a walkover win against the first African nation. Now, let's make a step back. Dictator Mobutu Sese Seko Kuku Ngbendu Vazabanga, which we will call Mobutu from now on, made huge investments. He tried to create a strong football team, recalling players from Europe against their will and tried to qualify. As they completed the task, he got excited, throwing richness into the hands of players by offering rewards such as cars and houses. He sent over multiple government officials to represent the country and to get publicity. Mobutu had offered a huge pot of money for them to spend, which they soon finished. As this occurred, they realized the money was over and Mobutu was effectively refusing to pay them for the efforts. Players complained with the officials and chaos broke out just after the heroic performance against a Scotland side that featured players such as Dennis Lowe and Kenny Douglas. After the dispute, players refused to step on the pitch. They weren't getting paid. Eventually, they were convinced by the FIFA with a small allowance. They intervened to avoid a national fiasco, putting some money forward to let them play. After the chaos, Zaire met Yugoslavia. They were coming off days of stress. They lacked focus and motivation. Or was it simply farce? Yugoslavia scored three goals in 20 minutes, as Zaire surprisingly kept on the bench some of their best players. After the goals, they substituted in goalkeeper Dimbi Tubilandu. There's nothing strange apart from the fact that he was 5 feet 4. They put up a display of awful defending, equaling the worst ever defeat in World Cup history as the game finished 9-0. Let's remember though, circumstances were not revealed and to the eyes of the world it looked like just the game was a humiliating publicity for Africa. A conspiracy theory also implies that Zaire coach Vidinic, a Yugoslavian himself, deliberately put in a weak formation to allow his country of birth to win. The final game is against reigning champions Brazil. Mobutu was left shock. He threatened his players. He sent presidential guards which stated that if the team lost by more than three goals, they would be made prisoners and nobody would return home. Now, the Zaire players are fearing for their lives. After being denied the money and the bonuses that were promised, they start to panic. They're being defined as clowns in front of the whole world, but in truth, nobody knew what was actually happening. At some point in the game, the scoreline says 2-0, which is still respectable. But when Brazil win a free kick from about 25 yards, one of the most infamous events happens. Fearing for his own life, defender Ilunga kicked the ball as far as he could, intervening before any Brazilian player could. Effectively, he just kicked the ball away. It was a tactic to waste time, a form of protest, a way to avoid a heavier scoreline. Of course, nobody knew. It was defined as a bizarre moment of African ignorance. After the elimination, 
Mobutu cut off all the funding for football and the story of the Zaire national team pretty much ends here. They never qualified to World Cup since, only twice have they reached an African Cup of Nations semi-final in the period. The score in the World Cup set no goals, 14 goals conceded. A humiliating return home for the players who got exposed and were ruthlessly used as publicity for how bad Africa was deemed to be. The press mounted on them, claiming how they were unprofessional and failed to know the rules of football. In truth, Zaire's actions are far beyond that. It's players, humans who fear for their life, in what should be the most beautiful game in the world. Rather than enjoying themselves in the most important scenario, they panic because their days may be over. <laughs>